Man, welcome back to the Halfway Up Podcast, and I call it Halfway Up because you're never finished rising. And today's episode is something that I got a lot of wisdom to share with y'all on. I got a lot of wisdom to share with y'all on this subject in particular because it is one of the, the hardest struggles that took me the longest to get away from. It's one of them things, you know, we all live in this story, right? Your life is a story, and in your story, imagine yourself being a superhero, and every superhero has a villain, right? Every superhero has something that he has to face or that he has to come up against and he has to defeat if he wants to make it to the victory. If you want to save the princess on some Mario Zelda type shit, if you want to make it to that other side from the beginning into the end to complete the story, right? Because stories have a beginning, a middle and an end. You have to overcome something. This is that thing that I had to overcome. And that's why I feel qualified to speak on it and share um, a little bit of wisdom on it, not meaning that I'm a professional, but I can definitely give you my insight from personal experience. And that subject is outgrowing your friends. That's the topic. That's the thing that we're going to talk about because I got a lot of experience in that. You know, I know there are a lot of people out there who might also be going through this and they might not have somebody to walk through this journey with. You know, when I was going through outgrowing my friends, I didn't have anybody that I could really talk to because the people that I usually would talk to were the people that I was outgrowing. If there are people out there that are going through this and they don't have that outlet or they don't have a voice of reason or a voice of wisdom, somebody who had been through this already to bounce ideas off with and just kind of like, you know, just let off and just trying to share some of that shit with, I want this to be for them. I want this to be for them because I was once in your shoes. I was the person that was going through this journey, making a tough decision of letting go of what's familiar to you to walk into the unknown, right? Walking into a situation of, I don't really know who else out there is for me because the people that are around me now, they're the most familiar to me. We speak a similar language. We talk the same. We walk the same. We dress the same. You know, we understand each other. We, it's like we got that culture, that glue that bonds us together. And then letting go of that, which is feels like security, even though you're not necessarily happy with it, it feels like secure to leave that and then walk into the unknown, not knowing who you're going to find, if you're even going to find anything. And then overcoming the um, the thing that might hold you back of doing it by yourself, doing it alone. No matter what city you're in, no matter what state you're in, no matter what color or race, no matter what you got going on, you might find yourself in a place where there's something that you want for yourself, right? Something that you don't have, but something you aspire to have. And maybe it's because you see it through other people. Maybe you live in vicariously through other people and seeing something that that you would like to have for you and yours, for you and your people. And that's how growth starts, right? Like that's why exposure is so important. That's why um, traveling and allowing yourself to get put in different groups of thinkers, different groups of cultures is so important because you don't know what you don't know sometimes. And until somebody puts you on, that's why we even got a whole saying in our culture, like let me put you on game, right? Because you was walking around not knowing. You was walking around having no idea that there's another option, another way of doing things, right? Like you ever been to two different high schools and in one high school, they might roll their pants up a certain kind of way or they might have a different way of saying one thing. Like if something's cool, right? White people be like, oh bro, that's so cool or some shit like that. I don't know what white people be saying because I ain't grow up around them. But in the black culture, you might be like, oh, that's dope, right? But then you might go to another school and niggas be like, word, that's fresh. A word, like that's, that's fire. You know what I mean? Some shit like that. You know, it's... You got to get put on to things. That's how you learn. So you might be in a place in your life where you, vicariously you living through somebody else, whether that's people that you can actually see and reach out to tangibly or you living through these people on the Internet and you seeing like, oh, they're in a place of growth, at least from the vantage point that I'm at right now. And they represent or th whatever this thing is that I'm channeling right now. Right. This thing represents where I want to be in comparison to where I am right now. And then you might look at your friends and you might realize, you know, we're different. You know, we don't have that same level of exposure. We don't have that same level of knowingness that these other kids or these other group of people have. So then you might try to teach people what you learn, right? Because that's what all good people do. You know, you go somewhere else and you see what niggas on. We try to do it in business all of the time, right? Like you might be around a group of people. You might have a conversation with somebody someday and they might enlighten you. You know, they might put something fresh on your mind like yo this is how you can make a couple thousand dollars so what do you do when you hear stuff like that as people you go back and you give it to your community to the to the people that are back home that speak the language that you speak and that look like you and you try to tell them like yo 
I done found out this is this is a you know they getting money over here. They doing life like this. People over here eating healthier. You know, it's like a whole movement going on where people eating a certain kind of way. And I done found out that they got like toxic chemicals in the food that we eating and then the, the the meat that they giving us. It's like filled with preservatives and they injecting it with all these different things and they mistreating the chickens and the cows and the farm animals before it gets to us and. You know, all of these things, right? You try to educate your people and you might find that you try to empower your people and they might not want to be empowered. That's something that you might realize when you start to begin outgrowing your friends. It, all, it usually starts in a place of you trying to empower your friends with some information that you don't got put onto, some game or some education that you don't got put onto. And now you want to give it back to your community because nobody wants to get rich by themselves, Right. Like if you find some information that can empower you or some level of education or some level of access to a better life, you want to take what you learn and then you want to share it and teach it to the people that come from where you come from. You want to teach it to them so that we can all walk through this um, finish line together. You know what I mean? So we can cut that red tape together. But one of the frustrating things about outgrowing your friends is one day you might realize that, damn, these niggas don't want to learn. Now, for the people that are trying to educate their friends, you might be in that phase where I'm actually trying to teach them some of the things that I'm learning. Like maybe you learning through Kai Sanai. Maybe you learning through some of these content creators and these influencers on ways that we can get a bag. Like you might see some funny people, right? And they might be on social media doing their thing and profiting from it though. Like really monetizing their gifts, just being naturally funny. And then you might be like, yo, my homie's funny as hell. We could easily do this. So then you try to put them on game. But maybe they don't take to it right away. Maybe they don't maybe they don't really get your vision right away. And if you're in that scenario, no matter what the scenario is, no matter what it is that you're trying to teach your people, what I want to let you know is give your friends grace. Before you cut people off, before you have officially made a declaration that I'm outgrowing my friends, try to give them a little grace because what you're trying to put them onto, it is a learning curve. Like what like the you always gotta remember that the way your mind works their mind works completely different than that. Yeah, y'all are friends and y'all have that common interest of things that bring y'all together, but y'all are still different people. As much as y'all are alike, as similar as you may be, y'all are different people. And what you want to do is before you go to cutting people off and deciding that I'm outgrowing my friends, you want to give them a little grace. Give them a little grace to figure it out. You know, you got to give a learning curve. Some kids learn faster than other kids in class, but it doesn't mean that they're smarter than you. And it doesn't mean that you're smarter than them. So you got to give them a little bit of space and walk them through it. Because chances are when you're trying to put your friends onto something, whether it's like there's a better way to conduct ourselves in the world or there's a better way we could be spending our time. We could be spending our time more wisely or we always spending our money drinking and smoking and shit like that. I got a better thing. I got something better we can do with our money. I know we can put our money into this account and we can double our income or we can make this investment and then we can sell these things. We can flip these things. We can make a profit. Like sometimes it's not going to be clear to people what your vision is. Sometimes it's not clear. And for that reason, you got to give grace to your friends. You got to give grace to your people. But there is a limit, though. There is a limit to the amount of grace that you give to said person. It doesn't matter who that person is, whether it's your close friend, acquaintances, even family members. I, it's not for me to tell you what that limitation is. It's not for me to tell you what that window of grace and patience should look like. That's for you to decide. But for me, if I learn something and I realize that it is going to benefit us, benefit us, right? It's going to make our lives better, which means that to me, in my mind, it should be a no brainer to you. It should be no question for you to want to be like, oh, word, Wolf trying to put me on to some shit that's going to help me change my life. Let me try to get with what he's what he's trying to show me. There should be, you got to give a small window of, you got to give a window of time for those people to get it. But if you have, but if you, but at the, but at the trying to put them on game, if you have concluded that they bullshitting and they wasting your time, then I think you should feel comfortable with leaving them be, man, leaving them behind. Because when I was growing up with all of my friends and when I was growing up with my peers, right, um, I never developed that part of the learning process, right? I hadn't, that's why it's wisdom for me today because I did it the wrong way. Me personally, I stuck around for years waiting on people to do what I think they should have done to better their lives. And you know, some people might be listening to this, some people that I know personally, and they might be like, well, what makes you the boss, right? What makes you the expert? What makes you so knowledgeable? What makes you 
better than us to think that, oh, because you learned something that now if we don't learn it in a certain amount of time that you're going to be done with us. Listen, you can't please everybody. Everybody can't be pleased. You know, you're right. Maybe I am thinking highly of myself or maybe I do need to humble myself in some type of capacity, right? But at the end of the day, we only have so much time on earth. It's only so much time that we have is very limited and nobody is guaranteed a long and fruitful life. And what I'm saying is, is that that's why I'm telling the people to give grace and extend a little bit of time, but then don't overstay your welcome though. If people want to change, change will be made and it's not going to take years. I waited years for people to try to show me I waited years because of potential, because of my friends had potential, because I knew what they were, because I knew what they were capable of. I was willing to wait years for them to make those changes, to make those investments, to build those relationships, to go seek that information, to go seek that knowledge, to apply the knowledge. I waited years. I waited years when I really shouldn't have, man. I waited years to watch those people make positive changes for their life. You know, because I'm already on it. I'm already intrigued and fascinated by the information. So I'm applying it, right? And I might not be nailing it all the way. So maybe people watching me trying to do the thing that I was trying to put them onto, maybe I wasn't uh, convincing enough because I wasn't doing it all the way right myself. But there's a learning curve, right? I'm putting my hands on something that I ain't never experienced before. So maybe that's what it was. And, you know, that's between them and God. But at the end of the day, um, it doesn't take years for somebody to want to change their life. At the end of the day, if your life is at a certain place and you're not all the way happy with it or you or you know to some capacity that like, hey, you know, I'm not going to get to the promised land if I keep doing things the way I've been doing it. There needs to be a change at some point. I don't I shouldn't have to convince you of that because you live in that. You get what I'm saying? Like you live in that. You know what it feels like when you go home to that shitty ass crib. Yes, your crib, but it's like, don't you want better? Don't you want to put your family somewhere else? Don't you want to contribute? Because maybe you feel like it shouldn't be, the pressure should be all on you, especially when you're the child and your parents brought you into this earth, right? But don't you want to be the person that helps contribute to the growth, that helps contribute to the change where your family can get from A to B somehow? Don't you want to play your part in that? To play your part in that, um, if you're born at the bottom of society economically, um, nobody's going to come and save you. Nobody's going to come and give you the information. Nobody's going to come and give you the keys to freedom or give you the keys to having that crib and that nice environment, changing your zip code. Nobody's going to do that for you. So you have to do it for yourself. And if you're that person who feels motivated because you're tired of being broke, you're tired of being in the trenches, you're tired of not having shit, right? You're tired of having family members that got to go to the hospital and y'all stressing about what you can't do or that procedure that you can't have all because of the money that you don't have. If you tired of living like that, then there's only one thing that you have to do. You got to get this money. You got to learn information. You got to create relationships. You got to climb the ladders of society, right? You got to become a detective. You got to go through this life and you got to try to learn what you don't know. You got to try to find what you don't have so that you can cross those waters, bro. So you can cross that. You can get over to what it is that you don't have. And if the people that are around you that's living the same type of life that you live in, is living in the same type of environment that you live in, if they don't get that, if they don't feel moved by that, if being broke is not enough motivation for them, then I think that's a great reason to leave your friends, you know? And I'm not even saying that you got to cut them off all the way because that's another thing that I had to learn. I had to learn that just because somebody don't see eye to eye with me as far as what they want out of their life and what I want for mine doesn't mean that I have to eliminate them in totality. It doesn't mean that I have to completely just be like, oh, you're useless now then. You don't want more for yourself. You want to be in the hood. You want to wear. You want to always, you want to never know what it's like to, to get dressed exactly how you want to represent yourself. You want to never know what it's like to hop in a certain kind of car that you want to hop in. You want to never know what it's like to put your keys in a certain kind of house. You want to never know what it's like to... um to not have to ask your boss for permission to take a two week vacation. If you don't want to know what that's like, then forget you. That's how I was moving about things before. And I'm actually about to record a podcast later uh, about burning bridges because I was always burning bridges. So I'm not gonna go too much into that because I got a, another episode that's gonna be about that. Um, please tune into that too, because it's, it's gonna be great. But I had to learn as well that just because people not seeing eye to eye with you don't mean that you gotta cut them off. It's just that they're not at that level. And what you should do, once again, about giving grace, before you have decided that you outgrown your friends, or you know what, scratch that. 
if you've outgrown your friends, what I want you to do is not cut them people off because the truth is they might change. Your level of growth and your level of maturity might be at a faster pace than theirs right now, but it doesn't mean that they're not going to open their eyes or life is not going to enlighten them in some kind of way for better or worse and teach them like, okay, now I know what I need to do. Oh, now I realize what bro was saying this whole time. He was right. He was right. And now I'm tired of being broke. Now I'm convinced. I'm, I'm tired of wasting my time doing the same shit that I've been doing. Because if you look around in your neighborhood, you can easily see a bunch of people who've been doing what they've been doing. Listen, we all coming from families where you got that cousin or you got that uncle or you got that family member who in the same place they was when you was a baby, they still in that position now. They have no more. And this is not to put them, they don't got more than they had when you seen them when you was a kid, when you was running around in them family reunions and people was eating mac and cheese and chicken and they having drinks and they playing spades and they gambling, they playing dominoes and shit like that. We got family members that we seen them in one phase of their life and they still in that phase. And this is not to condemn them. This is not to bully them. This is not to ostracize them. This is not to create separation, but it is to be a reminder to you that you will become that same person if you do not educate yourself. They say knowledge is power. Man, I remember one time I was uh, pumping gas. I had like a 1995 Honda Accord. And it was fucked up, but that's another story. It was my car though, you know what I mean? And it drove when it wanted to and I could get around. But I remember I was pumping gas one day and I feel like God always speaks to me in like these downloads, right? Like I kind of just like something just hits me. It's, they, call it an, uh, they call it an epiphany. I had an epiphany that knowledge is power. You can't, you, you don't know what you don't know, right? So a lot of us is bad with credit, right? Or a lot of us don't know about how we can make investments to make more money. Some of us, the only smart decision that we know to make is to save money. Some of us don't know that like on top of saving money, you can invest your money in other things that will bring more money back. So that same amount of time that you would spend saving money, you could invest money and get way more money back than you would just saving money. And like, congratulate you. I want to congratulate you if you are saving money, because that's a beautiful thing. That's a very important step to make. However, there are certain things that you could do. And let's say you save money for like a year. Some people going to invest money and make 10 times what you would have made by saving. So it's not to say that you didn't do the right thing by saving your money. But what I'm saying is knowledge is power in the sense of that if I was to tell you that I know a way where that same $1,000 that you're going to save and you're going to tuck and it's just going to sit for a year or as you add another $1,000 on top of it. What if I told you you could take that money and place that money here and then that $1,000 is going to become $5,000. So when you got two different people, one person going to save for a year, the other person going to save and invest for a year. The person that's saving, they're going to have like maybe two, $3,000 and the other person going to have 10 because they knew how to invest. And it's not because they're smarter than you. It's because they have the knowledge. Because knowledge is power. And the only way that you get knowledge is by seeking it. Those who seek shall find. If you're not looking for information, you're waiting for information to find you, man, you're wasting your life. You're wasting your life. Because there's two schools of thought, I think. You got the spiritual type of people that had this school of thought that the universe will bring everything it needs to bring to you, right? But that's only if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. And part of, I feel like, the contract with the universe that you sign, part of the requirement is that you need to be actively going out of your way to become better. The better life is not going to just come to you all just because you think that it should, right? Or just because you think that that's the way the universe works and that's the way God works. Like faith without works is dead. I don't know the scripture of that in the Bible, but I know that it is a true concept because when I look around and I see the other people that just have faith, but no works, I do not see them gaining more. I do not see them um, adding toward their life, right? I think, and again, it doesn't make you a bad person or it doesn't make me better than you. Just because somebody got more money than you or somebody's more successful than you, it does not make you a better person than them. However, though, as a good person, you have to ask yourself, what am I willing to do to get the things that I don't have? Because you have to do something. And if you are the type of person that has a group of friends that are not interested in um, enriching their mind, enriching their, enriching their finances, enriching their values, then that might be a good sign for you to walk around for them people, you, you know, leave them. And you don't got to cut them off, but, you know, outgrowing is outgrowing. That means that you got to limit your time. When you outgrowing your friends, when you outgrowing your family, you got to limit your time. Once you have made that decision that I know that I'm on some shit that they not on, 
Now you got to stop being around them as much. Even if you live in the same house with them people, you got to find a way to limit your access to them. So some, they, if you, even if you live with them, that might mean them conversations that I would, we would usually have, we would talk for hours and shit like that. I'm going to have to limit it to like 30 minutes. I might have to limit this to 10 minutes because I got to go upstairs into the room and close the door and I got to get on YouTube and I got to learn some shit that I'm going to apply in real life. Not just learning it because a lot of the time we have this like knowledge porn where we're like, um, we have a lust for learning information, right? We'll put on YouTube and we'll hear like a nigga like Gary Vee speak and tell us some real ass shit, but we won't apply none of that shit in real life. When it comes to actually getting that paycheck and you're going to be like, all right, this is what we're going to do with the bread. You spend it again and you get caught up in this loop of not saving yourself, not getting off of the highway. You never exit. You just keep running out of circles until what happens? You eventually run out of gas. Um, what I'm trying to say is, is that whatever you got to do to better yourself, sometimes you got to do it by yourself. Sometimes there's people in your house or there's people in your neighborhood, there's people that you grew up with and you've known them your entire life. Sometimes you have to limit your access with them people because they're not on what you own no more. And all they want to do is to continue to do what they've been doing. They the ones who want to look up 15 years from now while they've lost their energy. They the ones who want to look up 15 years from now with less energy because they're not as young anymore and then be like, damn, that's what I should have did. And again, that doesn't make them any less of a person. I'm just telling you that nobody is above this happening to them. No matter what culture you belong to, no matter what language that you speak, no matter what kind of bop you got with your walk, you can look around and you can see people that sat on their ass and have nothing to show for it now. And you have to ask yourself, no matter what age you at, I don't give a fuck if you're 75, as long as you got breath in your body, I believe that you can make a change. I believe that you can make positive choices to try to get a step closer to what it is that you don't have. Growth is a beautiful thing, man. Growth is not always pulling the car off the lot or putting the keys in the beautiful crib that you want. Sometimes growth is, I read that book. Sometimes growth is, I did that thing that I said that I was going to do. If you ask me, growth is doing what you said you was going to do. That's why I keep a journal with me. I write down every night before I go to sleep, what is it that I got to do by tomorrow? So I know that I know how I'm staying on track with my life and with my progress. And I feel good about not checking off that little list of things, right? I write at least like three things. I never try to like overburden myself or try to like uh, give myself more than what I can handle because I don't want to, you know, overstimulate myself, you know? But I write down a couple things. You know, it's Monday, Monday night. These are the things that I want to get done by Tuesday. And if I check these things off, I had a great day. You know, growth looks like that. Success looks like that. Accomplishments looks like that. That's what that looks like. And the more you prove to yourself that you're capable of doing maybe the not so easy things, or at least doing the things that you said you was going to do, is going to create a confidence in you. It's going to create a trust with yourself where it's like, I know what I'm capable of. I know what I can do because I didn't did it. I do it every single day, you know? You have to limit your access to people who don't want the things that you want because they're going to pull you back in. Them nigga, you trying to stop smoking weed as much? You might have to stop hanging around weed smokers if your discipline is not strong enough. If your discipline is not strong enough, then you might have to stop hanging around them. You might have to stop hanging around people who only speak one certain kind of way. You might have to get around some other kind of people who have a more colorful way of thinking. You might be around negative people. They only see the bad in life. They only see everything from a pessimistic perspective. You know, you got to stop hanging around niggas like that. You need to get around some people that's, that love life so much that they gonna, it's going to rub off on you. You need to get around people that love this life shit. I can't be hanging around with no pessimistic ass niggas. People who see the cup half empty all the time. That's not a place for me. Sometimes the people that you love, they don't see the light. They don't see the world in a colorful way. They see the world in a, in, in a, in a gray way always trying to intellectualize their lack of ambition, always trying to intellectualize their lack of excitement for the world. It doesn't mean that you have to cut them off because they're, they're, they're on their own healing journey, whether that healing happens today or a year from now. But what it could mean is that I need to not fuck with you right now and I need to go fuck with some other niggas that are happy about this life shit because they're winners, because they're doers, because they're accomplishers, because they have a thirst and a curiosity for success and progress because they're willing to do whatever it takes to see their family not go through the things that we already been through. If the struggle is not enough motivation for you to change your life, then you need to move away from them people. If you got people who live in the trenches, who has family members who's um, sick in a 
hospital bill, hospital bill after hospital bill, um, paycheck to paycheck, pawn shops, loan sharks, loans, whatever it is. If you are people who maxing out credit cards, if that's the type of life that you come from and they not motivated enough to change, listen, you don't have what it takes to make the people change then. It's, it's bigger than you. It's bigger than you to make those people change because if they're not motivated enough by the realness of reality that affects all of us, that earthquakes all of our shit, you lead that one to God, then. Trust and believe. Sometimes if you got to give yourself a, a limited amount of time to try to educate your people and enlighten them. And if they are not convinced, you got to give it to God. Because the mistake that I made is that I didn't give it to God. I kept trying to shake them up like, wake up, wake up. Snap out of it. You falling asleep in the bathtub again. You know what I mean? Like the fucking toaster's about to fall in the bathtub. Wake up, wake up, wake up. You want to save people. But something that my mom taught me, a very wise lesson is don't save nobody that God didn't put you on assignment to save because saving people take real work. Saving people, you ever heard, like, you ever hear about a scenario with somebody drowning and because they so scared, they might drown you with them. So you see somebody drowning, you you above, you not in the water because you saved yourself already. You passed that part. You didn't got out the water and got on ground and now you walking and you walking towards your goals and now you building shit. You done made, you not at the level that they own no more. But then you might look back and you might see somebody, oh, help me, drowning in the water because they don't know how to fucking swim. And then because you got a big heart, you jump in the water. You want to save them because you're like, I got to save them because we got to have community. I don't want to be the only person that's rich. I don't want to be the only person that's enlightened that, that knows and that's walking into the sunset, walking into the light. So you jump back into the water. But then you know what might happen? If God didn't tell you to save those that person, they so scared, they holding on to you thinking that you the ledge, but you're not the fucking ledge. You're the person that's like trying to calm them down so you can get them to the ledge. But there's only so much strength that you have. There's only so much power that you have within yourself. And there's only so much power that you have within yourself. And then eventually, at some point, they, they might accidentally drown you. They don't even mean to fucking do it, but they might hurt you in process of you trying to save them. And now y'all both did. Don't be saving people that God didn't put you on assignment to save. That's all I'm trying to say. Listen, it's a learning curve to all of these things. It took me a long time to learn it. That I didn't have a lot of people teaching me. I had a couple people that I could talk to and bounce ideas off of, but you know, it was I, I had to learn it the hard way. I had to go through my shit the hard way. And that's why I feel qualified. I can share a little bit of wisdom on this, man. I grow on your friends. It's a tough process because you don't want to leave anybody behind. You don't want to leave anybody back because you love them. And if you want everybody to win, you want everybody to have success. You want everybody to know what it's like to have a better life. But you can't want it more for them than they want it for themselves. You will lose all of your greatness. You will lose all of your energy. You will lose all of what makes you amazing in the first place by trying to pour all of it into them. You'll lose all of it. You got to save some of that good energy for yourself. You got to save some of that good power and some of that good enlightenment for yourself. Listen, for the people that are not willing to grow and change around you, just give it some time and keep living your life. Keep making them steps because eventually you'll get to a group of people that will benefit from your knowledge. They'll benefit from what you're willing to contribute. Some people, know it don't matter what you tell them. They're not going to take what you're trying to give them because they're not at that place. And some of those people might never be. But there are other people, if you just give it some time, they might not be in your, degree of, your sixth degree of separation right now. But in a little bit, if you keep doing what you're supposed to do, if you walk away from those people, you're going to find some new people that's going to pick up everything you're putting down. They're going to appreciate you. They're going to see your value. They're going to understand your language. They're going to be inspired by you. They're going to want to be like you. And you won't even know what it's like to meet those people if you allow yourself to succumb to comfort. See, comfort is the enemy. Comfort is the number one thing that's going to stop you from getting what you're supposed to have in your life. Comfort is everything that you already know, but everything that you want is on the other side of comfort. When I left Dallas, Texas, and I came to New York City, man, I had to be very uncomfortable in this city, but I wanted to know way more than I wanted to be comfortable. I needed to know what it was like to be a creative in New York City and get that bag, to live the life that I want to live, to live in this beautiful city. I needed to know what that was like. I ain't had no family out here. I ain't had no friends that could put me on and nobody who could give me the good job or point me in the right direction. I didn't have that. I had to get gangster with this shit and become a detective and look for the clues. Are you willing to become a detective for the things that you're looking for? Once again, it goes back to the beginning, a story. 
beginning, middle, and end? Are you willing to leave your village and go through the wilderness and fight the enemy to become the king, to become victorious, to bask in the glory? Are you willing to do that? Life is fair in that way. Like, listen, man, it's only one way you get far in this life. It's by doing the work. That's the only way. Ain't no other way. If you know another way that you can get it, then let me know. Outgrowing your friends is a hard process, and it might mean that you have to be alone. I remember when I first stopped hanging out with my friends, um, I used to love, like, we would go to, like, local hip-hop shows in Dallas because Dallas has an amazing hip-hop community. And, you know, in my mind, I was like, we need to go to these, we need to go to these shows because the photographers are there, the videographers are there, the people who make content, the people that can help us get in better positions, the people who have talents and attributes that we don't have, the things that we cannot do for ourselves, they're there in these places. They're galvanizing, they're creating community. And we need to go where them places and where those people are. And we need to go where those people are so that we can grow. And, you know, they didn't want to go. They wanted to be at the crib smoking weed and drinking and doing what we always did. And, you know, I wasn't always this confident person. I wasn't always this person that was comfortable with being in these spaces. So I had to make a decision. Like, am I going to just stay at the crib with them and smoke weed on the couch like we always do in this dirty ass house? Or am I going to go out there into these places, the nice places, the nice venues, these places where all the cool kids was at and all the people who was also working hard to make something of themselves? My people, my tribe of people, my real tribe of people, because I was outgrowing my friends. What was I going to do? What was the decision I was going to make? And I had to, you know, drive downtown and I had to drive to that nice nightlife area and find parking and, you know, put the best clothes that I could on. And, you know, I had to walk into those venues feeling uncomfortable not being a person that was outgoing necessarily. I had to go into those places because it was either this or nothing. It was either continue to have what I've been had or go into them places and find a way to make myself known to people. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? My name is Wolf. Yo, I like your song. Yo, I know about you. I follow you on the gram. Like, yo, I know you. Like, yo, like I, you got to talk to people. I was nervous. But then I started to get comfortable. Then I started to uh, get my name out there. You know what I mean? Then I started to, to build with people. Then I started to go to new people's houses. Then I started to connect with new people. I was going in, I was in new studio sessions. I was listening. I was a fly, I was a fly on the wall in, in new environments. And then I gained new friends. And then new opportunities happened. And then, and then new opportunities started to come to me. I remember one of the first times I went to LA, it was because I made new friends. I was doing videos, I was shooting music videos, right? On my entrepreneurship, trying to make my own money, trying to take a step away from the nine to five um, system because I, that's what I wanted for myself. And I met new people eventually after being in these new places. I, you know, you, you, you talk to people and you create your own type of relationship with them. And then next thing you know, people saying like, yo, we going to Los Angeles. We need a videographer. You use cameras. Why don't you come out there with us? Better yet, I'll buy your ticket. I didn't have somebody spend five hundred dollars for to get me a last minute ticket to Los Angeles because they needed somebody to shoot music videos for them. I didn't need to be the best. It was never about being the best, and I tell people all the time: you do not have to be the best to get in those rooms. You do not have to be the best at what you do to get inside those doors. You don't have to be the best. All you got to do is sometimes all you got to do is show your face. Or sometimes all you got to do is show your face to get in the rooms and get into them places and to get to them levels and build them type of relationships that you want to be having for yourself. And so much of my life has came from me stepping outside of my comfort zone. Stepping outside of your comfort zone is a level that most people never get out of. The first step is the hardest step, which is stepping out of your comfort zone. You got to go places where people don't even look like you. You got to be in places where people don't even walk how you walk. They don't even dress how you dress. They don't even speak the language that you speak. But you got to be around them, though. You got to ask yourself, what's more important to me? Sticking, sticking around niggas who know what I sticking around niggas who know what I know or getting around some people that can teach me the things that I don't know. Because knowledge is power. Once again, the more I know, the more I can do. And the more I can do, the more I can change my reality. You don't got to save these people. You can save some other people. Sometimes the people that you want to save... They holding you back. Why don't you step away from them and bet on yourself? Go learn some shit. Stop being scared to take a loss. Stop being scared to lose. Stop being scared to look stupid. Sometimes you got to look stupid. It, you're not going to look smart because you got to learn it. It's a learning curve. 
You going to look stupid sometimes and some people going to point the finger at you and they going to make you feel small. But you know what? Fuck them. Fuck them anyway. Because I got a mission. I'm out here living on purpose. I'm out here living on assignment, man. I want success more than I want to save myself from looking dumb. Because eventually you're going to look smart. A lot of the people that's making you feel dumb today, they're going to be looking at you like, damn, that nigga did that shit. Damn, that nigga. Five years done went by and I'm still where I was. The, the, the same. I'm, five years done went by and I'm exactly where I was in the beginning when this nigga left me. Five years done went by and I'm in the same position that I am now. Now this nigga like miles away doing all this amazing shit, doing all of these incredible things. Again, that doesn't make you better than them because you got to hold your growth with grace. You don't never want to be the nigga that made the right decisions and now he am uh, moving around acting like he better than people. You don't never want to be that nigga because life will humble you. God will humble you. God will knock you down. Just, just as quickly as he puts you in the fast lane, he'll put your ass right back in the highway with the rest of the people. You know what I mean? You got to humble yourself. It doesn't make you better. But you gotta, you gotta learn how to carry your grace. You gotta learn how to carry your success. You know what I mean? Because once again, those people at the, at the, at the, those people that you had to leave behind, some of them might change. Some of them might have a change of heart, and some of them might be like, you know what? I see what you're saying now, bro. Now I'm willing to learn. Now I'm willing to learn, and that would be a beautiful thing to help those people. Everybody doesn't learn at the same pace, man. When I was in school, um. You know, I never knew the answers. I always had to have special education. I always had to have people help me because I couldn't keep up with the pace of the class. But I personally think that, like, the life that I'm living is probably way better than the majority of the people that I was in high school with, people I was even in college with because of the risk that I was willing to take for what it is that I wanted. So, you know, don't be scared to outgrow your friends. That's the moral of the story. I'm going to wrap the episode up here. But don't be scared, man. And if you need help, please reach out to me. I would love to give you advice. I would love to give you game. I would love to share a little bit of information with you because I have been through it. And, you know, I want to help people that might be going through it still. You know, I've been through it. Trust me. I know what it's like. It's, it's not easy, but I want to let you know that you, you can do it. I want to let you know that you're more than capable of, you're more than capable of figuring this out. Just remain curious. Always have a thirst for knowledge and empower yourself to be better. Get around some new people. Limit your access to people who don't want the best for you. Limit your access to people who don't want the best for themselves. You might be careless and think that, oh, I love my homie. My homie don't want a whole lot for himself, but it don't matter though, because that's my friend. I personally think it's a matter of time. Unless he's unless that person real solid, I think it's only a matter of time before that person finds some kind of way to um um, fuck, I don't know. You'll you'll get you'll get hurt in the process of dealing with a person who don't want to do nothing but hurt themselves. You'll get hurt in the process. Like you might think because that fire burning over there that it won't burn you, but somehow, some way, life has an interesting way. Fire spreads, man, in very interesting ways. The wind blow, boom. Now it's burning on your shit. Oh, I was working so hard building this garden, my shit burning up. Get the water, get the water, stomp it out. Like, yeah, now even if you save your shit, like. You, now you got to come back from a loss because you wasn't paying attention to the fact that this person who don't love themselves enough to grow, they might hurt you and it might not even be on purpose, bro. I'm telling you, man, this life should get deep. Anyway, um, I'm going to wrap this one up. I appreciate you guys. Um, outgrowing your friends is a tough process, but you can do it. I love you. Reach out to me if you have any questions. I would love to hear your story. We can talk about it. Let's build, man. I, I'm all about building a sense of community. And it's easier to become a part of community once you realize that we're not so different. We're actually going through very similar things. We might be going through it in a different house. We might be going through it in a different set of shoes. We might be going through it in a different um, zip code. But we're more similar than we're different. We have more things that bring us together than things that set us apart. Let's focus on the similarities and not the things that make us different. And with that being said, I'm out of here, man. Please leave a rating and review on the podcast if you love it. This is the Halfway Up Podcast. I am Wolf Taylor. The mantra, the religion, the spirit of the brand. Whenever I'm working, I will remember that done is better than perfect. And if I'm satisfied with my work, then that means that I'm living in my purpose. And one more thing before we get up out of here. Remember that youth runs out of time, but being healthy is forever. We must stay healthy. Shirts coming to you soon, man. I'm going to have that coming to y'all real soon. I love y'all, man. Peace. <laughs>